Good morning, both. Um, I'm, my name is Tim Buckle. I'm one of the audit managers with Audit Wales. And I suppose a bit of background about me first is before I joined Audit Wales, I used to work for the WLGA in improvement and governance, uh, working with councils and national parks and, and so on across Wales. Um, and before that, I worked in three local authorities, including um, as head of OVN scrutiny at Bridgeng Council. Um, so I, I bring some experience of this topic um, to, the, to the meeting today. Um, and I should have said probably at the beginning that today we're going to be talking about democratic engagement with a focus on, on if and how the, the events of the pandemic over the past year have changed that both in the short term, but also looking ahead to anything that, that we, may, we feel may lead to further changes going forward or more permanent changes. And I'm joined today by Councillor Neil Pryor and uh, Hugh Evans, and I'll just ask you both to introduce yourselves briefly, if that's okay. So yes, Councillor Neil Pryor, um, I'm at Pembrokeshire County Council. I was elected in 2017 as an independent, so this is my first term. Um, and shortly after that, I was asked to join the cabinet. So I've got cabinet responsibility for transformation and IT, which has been uh, fascinating over the last four years. Um, in addition to that, I'm deputy spokesperson at the WLGA for digital and innovation. And I'm also deputy chair of the LGA's Improvement and Innovation Board. I'm Hugh Evans. I'm head of democratic services with Fondly Council. Been involved um, for 30 years in democratic services. Um, it feels like a lifetime, but I've never made that jump to obviously to become an elected uh, councillor. Never been that fortunate. But um, it's, it's been an interesting time and hopefully a wealth of experience behind me. Okay, thanks both. Um, that's, that's really useful, I think, to get a picture of uh, hopefully who we all are. So I suppose just to kick things off, um, it'd be interesting to hear from both of you really, how, how your particular roles have changed over the course of the pandemic and, and any kind of learning from that, I suppose. I don't know who wants to go first. In a nutshell, it, it's forced us to modernise the whole democrat, democratic engagement uh, process from being heavily reliant on paper, on physical meetings. It's allowed us to innovate by looking at simple solutions from working from home, by going far more digital in, in our, in our uh, uh, processes. And of course, that in turn has helped lower the carbon footprint. Great, thanks you. And um, Neil? I mean, there's so much, isn't there, really? Um, I mean, I can certainly r relate to Hugh's experience of, on the other side of the fence, being an elected member and moving moving all our meetings online. Um, but in terms of the biggest change for me as an elected member, I think, has been um, a closer sense of connection to my local community. My community leadership role was was such that, you know, I really needed to make sure that I was there, not to not to do for people, but to support. So so actually, and you know, I was I was an active ward member beforehand, but I've been even more active digitally during the course of the pandemic. Thanks, both. That's in interesting. I suppose um from Audit Wales perspective, we we um some of the work that we do is observing meetings, obviously. So at a very simple level, it's made it, it, most councils had online meetings before, but it's made it much easier for us, for example, to access meetings remotely. Um, and I guess that that therefore must be true of others and the, the public and other stakeholders as well. So I mean, certainly that's an observation from that we've we've probably got. Um, I suppose the other question I'd be interested in is uh, things have happened very quickly in terms of digitalization, for want of a better phrase, around democracy. Um, do you think the infrastructure has improved such that, that that will make it easier going forward as well? Or, or do you think that that's happened at a pace? I, I'm not thinking so much as the, within the councils, but other, other people have had to be forced in a way to become accustomed to online meetings, to that technology and so on. Do you think that provides opportunities around opening up democracy further or encouraging participation and so on? Yeah, I, I think um, I, I pick it on the councillors initially. Um, I'm sure every council has... A, had a difficulty with getting certain councillors to move to, towards a digital solution. Um, and with the panda pandemic, it pretty much led to a sink or swim approach. And I was honestly surprised and pleased how councillors embraced it. They, they realised it, you know, it, it wasn't a game, they had to get on with it, and they've really embraced that. So that's been a positive, instant issue. 
But of course, public then are able to view um, discussions. We're seeing it, we've seen a raise in questions being asked at the committee because people can, put them, can, can submit them in advance and they can ask questions at certain meetings. That certainly has improved things because now people don't need to waste an hour perhaps traveling to the meeting, an hour going home or what have you. They can do it in live time with minimum disruption, not affecting their family life and things, and still get that important engagement element in um, to take to participate. And of course, we want to hear what people want, have to say. So that's been really helpful. Some of the difficulties clearly have been um, with the infrastructure, poor, poor networks at home, broadband isn't always stable enough. And you know, that's difficult, especially when you're trying to run a meeting on your own uh, stable network goes down. But we've got systems in place. We've embraced. We've had and ensured. You know, I, if I if mine falls out, there's someone there to take it up for me instantly. But for councillors with their voting and things, you see, realise how critical um, you've got to ensure they are able to vote. And we've had things like for, you can phone in. You know, we we've covered it with with perhaps old technology to back up modern technology to make sure no one's disenfranchised. Similar, you know, in Pembrokeshire where we've had. Uh... Clearly, people, you know, we've we've got uh, some young councillors who are, and I'm not being ageist here, but they're very adept with the technology. And we've had some who have, have yeah, have, have struggled, but have have got on board with it. We've got, we've still got some who are who desperately want to get back into the chamber. It's it's the dynamic as well. I guess that's an interesting um, area to explore as well. I suppose the the question that keeps coming up, I think, in my mind is what happens or, or where does that leave people who aren't able to access things digitally? And, and is there a risk they get left behind, um, both within and outside the council, potentially? Um, and I just I wonder whether that's already been something you may have um, considered so far or, or been an issue for you. We, we have got to shake things up and be available so that nobody is disenfranchised. And that means working from home attending remotely or physically attending and we've got to address it it's shaking up almost a 50 year old piece of legislation in the 1972 local government act which is long overdue for the shake up and covid the sport issue i appreciate that the Demo um, democratic services um bill was working through that which is coming into force uh, in, in pieces now but it's forced that issue and it's really opened their eyes for me it's still that democracy is still about being able to access your locally elected councillor when you need to, and for them to be able to act on your behalf. Um, the only thing I would say is actually uh, through the community council, one of them I'm involved with, we have done a couple of um, community engagement events using Zoom, where we have had more members of the public dialing in. I wonder if um, there's some work to be done potentially around the, the differences, I suppose, you know, has, has has the change in the way things are done increased activity more generally and what the lessons might be from some of that as well just as a an observation maybe um i guess looking forward or, or looking back as well what what do you think the biggest change or the biggest thing to take away from the way that the pandemic is impacted on local democracy and, and the way things are uh, the way things are done around that area so the biggest change for me that i think is potentially the most difficult for us to get our heads around as well is to really make sure that we're able to support that community spirit and community power that we've seen because the tendency will be in local government that we want to sort of take control of a bit of that and then st start putting frameworks and policies in place whereas there's been uh, some research recently by an organization called new local who have said that um as soon as you try to put some kind of framework around that community action, you stifle it. It's how, as public institutions, we're able to simultaneously support that, but at the same time, let go a little bit. That's, that's the big challenge, I think. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, and I, and it, it's interesting from a, from a councillor perspective, isn't it, really? And you see things differently to what, 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 what I see. Um, for me, I do, I do remain a little bit concerned that there is a, a large number of people who remain disenfranchised, um, not, not a lot of it because they've no interest or they don't realise what work we're doing in councils and as such, they're not looking for that information. And that's the difficult side for me now, it's reaching out to the people who don't realise 
that they want to be told about what's what uh, it, to be engaged with those people that are unsure. Um, for challenges and the biggest changes, I found that everyone's had to just um, learn to juggle a number of balls in the air, learn um, to do things differently, and nothing is outside of my remit these days. It, it's, it's business as usual for what the front end see behind the scene. There are so many things in place just in case something goes wrong so, so that democracy can continue. And, and that's, I think, resilience is what we've all learned, really. Hmm. I think it, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really interesting here. I think it's quite niche, though, isn't it? So for someone who wants to tune in to watch a council meeting, to watch a, a scrutiny committee, I mean, who, seriously, who, who really wants to tune in to a corporate Obian scrutiny committee where we're talking about the performance of the HR department? Um, so for, I mean, I'm not saying that's wrong, but for local democracy, the, the majority of things that people get in touch with me about, I wish I'd have known this when I stood for election, highways, so speeding, it's dog poo, uh, and mud on the road is a classic Pembrokeshire favourite, especially being very rural. I had somebody contact me last week who is getting a mobility car, um, or get, is ready, uh, can put an order in for a new mobility car, wants to go electric, but because the power cable is going to cross the pavement, highways have said no. So democracy there is where she's contacted me, um, and we're now going to be able to start a conversation where I'm kind of intervening on behalf of the resident because I think it's the right thing to do and we should be able to find a solution to that. So for her, democracy is being able to contact me to be able to resolve an issue. Now, where that goes from there, it might be that we need to review the policy on electric charging points in council estates, but she's probably not going to tune into that. If I'm honest, you know, it's, it's, so this, there is, it affects them. Yes. Yeah. That's fair. There's definitely, you know, open, and Pembroke has been webcasting for years. So open democracy, great. Anybody can dial in, watch your back on the webcam. What did they say? But for me, democracy is still about, you know, have we got the right people in who have been elected in their communities who are, who are there to support and enable that community spirit and that community power. That's, that's the more I do this, and I'm still very, um, very green with this, but that the more I do it, that's where I see democracy for me. It's about being accessible. And, and it's, so it's not about the meetings, it's about the action that we do outside of that. Yeah, fully agree with you there. I, I think the point I was trying to make, and I, I, the outcome is as you say, but the point I'm trying to make is, that the people, even though they may not have interest in joining about the HR discussion or what have you, is that they know where to look should they have to. Some of what I think you've talked about there, both of you actually in different ways, is around um, communication actually and people understanding the what and the where and the how. Um, I just wonder whether taking, I think, both of your points really, you know, someone may not be interested in a corporate policy, but they might be interested in it if they understood it affected them. And, I, 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 and, and your point, Hugh, around and if, it, if they were interested, do they even know that discussion is happening? Um, and actually now from the pandemic, if they did understand it, is it easier to access because they can join a meeting or watch a recording or whatever it might be? I just wonder whether that's something that's come up in terms of the, the importance of communication or reflecting on how it could be done differently or does it need to be thought about more or less? I'd just pose that question, I suppose. Communications. Um, so much work we've got to do. So many platforms these days. And clearly... Um, we can't just rely on the comms team to do that work. Councillors, the public, local interest groups, they've got to use whatever means they've got, um, from social media through to uh, web pages. Uh, there, there's so many ways that people engage these days, and it's ensuring that you get that message to the right groups. So, looking forward, you, how do you think the pandemic will change, or w will it change local democracy for the future? So, I suppose we're talking about more permanent changes, things that, that I, I, you know, you'd like to think good things that have, that have come about from this, positives in, in spite of the, the situation that, that may improve local democracy at least or, or lead to change in local democracy for the future. Remote meetings really will lend itself and that's great to, to get a more um, honest representation of the underrepresented groups and the diverse diversity we need in local government, avoiding the old male, pale and stale 
issues that we've often been accused of. The future of local democracy. So it's a, it's a really difficult question. The mechanics, as we've mentioned, yeah, that should, that's one thing that might help more people get involved by having more hybrid meetings. Although I am worried about everybody racing back into County Hall to sit around the chamber again and do that as the, the, the standard way. But it's the future of local democracy. I think it has to be building on Hugh's point about more diversity, but I don't quite know how, how, we, how we do that yet. You know, it, it is, it's, not, it's not an easy gig being a councillor. You know, the, you, there are, um, it's, it's 24 seven. Um, even if you try to be sensible and non-confrontational and non-political, you're gonna attract trolls. You're gonna be accused of having your nose in the trough. So uh, we have to have some respect for uh for local democracy and then that way maybe we'll get more people and more diversity of of uh of characteristic and thought standing i think you put a really good point there um but the respect the gender really it, it's horrific to see uh, messages that have been posted openly on social media anti councillors and it's just not appropriate you know there's no need for such language um, and that certainly puts people off standing for election. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And the more diversity we can get, you know, the better we will be able to represent our communities. So if I was to ask a, maybe a, a more simple question around that, is do you think the pandemic will have a significant, do you think it will have a significant impact on, on local democracy in terms of changing it? Or, or as you said, Neil, I think, you know, will it be back to normal? I mean, I guess the answer obviously would be somewhere in between. But, but if, if you were to say in a few words, maybe, how, how significant an impact do you think it will have or, or won't it in terms of how local democracy uh, changes or not going forward? For me, it's modernised the process with the accessibility aspect. Um, and I don't like the terms like new normal and things, but it'll get into the same sort of niche that it's in, albeit on a slightly different platform. Um, democracy, you know, regardless of the pandemic, always has developed and blossomed and has changed. Democracy today is so different to what it was 10 years ago to what it was 18 months ago. So the pandemic is just, it, it's just the latest challenge and, and it will keep adapting because it, it, it lives. Uh, in terms of shaping the future, you know, I take that really seriously as well. And my, my fear is that we have been, uh, people, have, uh, staff and councillors have worked so hard on just continuous crisis management. We know that local government is great in a crisis, but this has been 12 months now nearly. So people are beginning to be fatigued and worn out. We've had the winter months that have really taken a toll on people. I'm really interested in where the, uh, the innovative thinking is happening and where the capacity for that is, because I think we have to create some fundamental systemic change out of this. The, the challenge is finding, being able to create the headspace out of the day-to-day -day grind to be able to think, this is how we want to do it in the future. As you were talking then, Neil, what was going through my mind was that any question about the future seems, what we've learned over the past year is, is almost, let's see, shall we, what happens? Because... Uh, one of the one of the lessons I guess from the last twelve months is planning too far ahead is dangerous at the moment in terms of assuming what will happen. So, so one of the things for me that I am pushing forward is um, the idea of the twenty first century public servant, which was some work done by University of Birmingham with the LGA, where you have multi skilled officers. So the days of um, getting in touch with somebody in uh, in a department and they have to speak to four other people because they've all got one specialist, specialism, I think they have to go. We've seen, and Swansea will be the same, I'm sure, but um, redeployed staff throughout the pandemic. You know, I followed one, um, one member of staff who was a climbing wall instructor, who, uh, when the leisure centres closed in the early days of the pandemic, she went across and uh, set up the uh, community hub and was one of the, the managers on, on a new you know an innovation the community hub where people could call up and get support um, when uh, things started to lock down ease she then became a tourism ambassador so she was out in some of our tourist hotspots advising visitors um, when that 
then a lockdown continued to ease. We went back into the climbing uh, centre and got that uh, set up again. Then we had another lockdown. She went into the incident management centre. So this is somebody who in the space of six, seven months has, has done five different jobs. And, you know, when I spoke to her, she was, she'd had her mind blown by just how much local government does from being on the climbing wall as a leisure instructor to somebody who has now experienced a whole load of different jobs within the council. And that for me is, that's the future as well. You know, the 21st century public servant is someone who understands what it, what it is to be a, a public servant, who is able to have that, that attitude, which is, I'm gonna get stuck into this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I need to do, has that customer focus. And so but one of the roles I think as thinking about that future, you know, we've, we've spoken about things uh, like greater use of data and, and continuing to invest in technology. That's one of the things definitely. That whole um, community power and enabling communities and being able to, to, to help them, but at the same time, let go. And then there's the bit about the workforce. It's always the workforce, isn't it? You know, any, any organization is, is only as good as its people. And if we can get our, our local government officers fired up and really enthused, that just holds us in good stead as well. So full circle, when I'm at scrutiny, those are the kind of conversations I want to be ha having that people might not dial into and tune into, but hopefully they would see that. I think bringing that back to the COVID learning work that we've done as well, it fits quite neatly with the, for example, the free school meals piece of work that we did, which looked at practice and the way councils had responded. And one of the, um, I think findings is a bit strong, but one of the observations in that report was that exactly that really, that, that structures and processes are one thing, but actually a flexible, motivated, and, and a workforce that's prepared to go the extra mile and do things that aren't in contracts or whatever. I think that's an observation that, um, not so much audit work, but that came through very strongly in discussions that we'd had and, and the thing, and what we looked at with that, well, that was a really strong thing that came through that people had, had rolled their sleeves up and and helped out, you know, and, and not done what they usually do. So yeah, I can, we can certainly uh, see some of that through our work. Sorry, Hugh, you about to say something? Yeah, there is, there, there, there is a lot to the issue here, isn't there? And I, I think the points you're, you're both making there are spot on, really. Um, I, I pride myself, if someone phones up, I, I often get the wrong number, someone's phoning an error and it's from a different department, but I will ensure then that I put them into the right person. I don't want them to go around the houses, you know, pillar to post. It, it's, it's bringing about that self-belief and that pride in all of our work to, to want to help others. And we've got to do it because I would get annoyed if I wasn't getting good service when I phone um, an operator up about some, you know, some business or whatever. I want to give the same when someone phones me up in the council. I want to go the extra mile because it reflects good on my personal um what i my beliefs so i i think you're spot on there but it's all of us have got to buy into that idea and it's not slagging the council off it's working as kind of you're, you're part of the council be proud of what we do to help others so if i can try and summarize i think some of what we talked about bringing it back to the theme of democratic engagement i think what you've both talked about is there are some changes in the way that councils need to operate could operate and that, that when we've just discussed around flexibility and responsiveness um we've talked about the the digitalization of demo of democratic procedures and the potential for that to carry on albeit in potential hybrid form but certainly potential there we've talked about social media the, the benefits and the pitfalls of that communication we touched on as well um so it, it seems to me i think inevitably what we've discussed is it's not as simple as separating local democracy as a thing and saying that's you know, process procedures but it's about all those things in the round and possibly then some discussions around not reset is not the word i'd use but a change a shift in in the way in which councils and communities communicate engage and i think neil as you were talking about the, the roles change slightly in terms of enabling more than delivering and so on mm -hmm. um, and that that all so yeah. they're, they're quite broad themes aren't they i think uh, it, it, yeah. does that sound like a fair assessment or summary yeah yeah i think i think it is yeah absolutely yeah it's um there's still a lot we've got to get through isn't there there's still a lot of figuring out to do but 
in, in that case, um, thanks very much, both of you, for your time. It's really is appreciated, particularly at the, with, I'm sure, the, uh, the workloads and the pressures that we're all dealing with at the moment, particularly in, in your organisations and so on. So thanks very much for your time and for your contributions. It's been really useful. Yeah,